Hi everyone, welcome to this video where today we're talking about linear measure. So we're gonna talk about, you know, just making sure we can measure with a ruler properly using inches and centimeters and um, mix and match. We're also gonna talk about segment and segment notation, what it looks like to find the measure of a segment and what it looks like to talk about congruent segments. So the first thing we need to take a look at is the definition of a line segment. A line segment is a segment with two endpoints. So here you see I have line segment AB, and you can see there's an endpoint and an endpoint. When you're dealing with a line segment, you don't use the arrows at the end. The arrows are for array or a line. So here I would call this segment AB or segment BA, and the notation for a segment is simply just a bar across those uh, letters at the top. If I had arrows at either end, then it would be a line, and if I had one arrow, then it would be array. So we need to make sure that whenever we're talking about a line segment where we have endpoint to endpoint, that this is how we call it, and order is not going to matter for us. It says the measure of segment AB is written as just AB. So we're going to get really used to, right from the beginning right now, when we talk about the physical segment, okay, the physical segment, we use the bar over the A and B. But when we're talking about the measure of it, the value, what's the actual length? Is it four inches? Is it four centimeters? The measure of that segment, we don't use the bar above it, and we just call it AB. And also notice we're using capital letters. Just like in my previous video, I talked about using a capital letter when we name a point, so point A or point B. We use those capital letters when we're naming a segment. It says, so the measure of segment AB is written as AB, which includes a unit of measure like inch or centimeter. Congruent segments, and this is the symbol for congruent, it's an equal sign with a squiggly line above it. That is the symbol for congruent. So congruent seg segments have the same measure. So if I say that two segments are congruent, then that would mean that the measure of the two segments are equal to each other, okay? Congruent is about the physical segment, and then equals refers to the actual measure, the value, those four inches or four centimeters. So what I wanna show you first, really simple, and I know virtually it's very hard to obviously measure, and you know, depending on how big your screen is, obviously these measurements are probably not gonna match up for you. But if I wanted to calculate the measure of each segment in inches and in centimeters, I can pull up my virtual ruler right here, and I just need to adjust my ruler so that it's um, in sync with my measurements here. If I wanted to measure the segment of AB and I wanted to measure it in inches, okay, this segment, this is my inches side, I'd be easily able to say that it's two inches. If I wanted to measure it in centimeters, which is what I see here, and I line it up, I could see that it's approximately five centimeters. And it's a little tricky to see, but it's pretty, pretty close to it. Something we should know is that each inch converts to 2.54 uh, centimeters. So five centimeters going for two inches is pretty accurate. For the next one, if I wanted to calculate CD in inches, I see it's exactly one inch. And then if I wanted to measure CD in centimeters, it looks like it's two and a half centimeters. The next one, if I wanted to measure EF in inches, now, something I want to show you here is notice I'm always lining up the ruler at the zero. We don't line the ruler up at the edge unless that happens to be where zero is. But I see my ruler is broken up into sixteenths for inches. That's how we break apart an inch into sixteenths. So I see it's three and one, two, three, four, five sixteenths. Now, when I measured this with a real ruler, I can see I used six eighteenths. So I'm just going to adjust that a bit. But think about it, 6 eighteenths simplifies down to 3 eighths. Now, if I had measured this and said it was 5 eighteenths, uh, 5 sixteenths rather, it's pretty close um, to that. It's only 1 sixteenth off. If I wanted to measure this in centimeters and line it up, I would count out how many centimeters I'm, I'm at, and it's approximately 8.3 centimeters. So you get the point. I would measure each one of these here for this inch, it's 1 and 11 sixteenths, okay, is that length. And then my centimeters, I should see that pretty much lines up right to 4.1 centimeters and so on. Um, I think we get the point about measuring. 
Okay, so the second part of this past just measuring is knowing how to measure when you have a part, part, and a whole. So here I have this entire segment of AC from endpoint to endpoint AC. And I have point B, where, which is somewhere in between A and C. And I, notice I don't have any actual values for this. But it says the whole is the sum of its parts. So it says point B is between points A and C. If and only if points A, B, and C are collinear, we've already learned that collinear means that there, there are points on the same line. And I'd also be able to make this statement that AB, so the measure of this segment, plus the measure of BC, okay, the measure of this segment, has to be then equal to AC. So AB plus BC is equal to AC. You can also say, of course, AC minus AB equals BC, or AC minus BC equals AB. And notice when I'm talking about the measures, I don't have the bar notation because the bar notation is strictly for the physical segment. So now let's take a look here. It says find the measure of each segment. So AB is 4.3, BC is 3.1. So AC would be to just find the sum of those two. So AC is 7.4 centimeters. I would simply add them up to get my full length. So part, part equals the whole. This one here, find the measure of BC. So here it's noted that nine inches is the entire length. That's the whole. My part is this five and three sixteenth inches. So I would need to do the whole minus that part. So nine minus that five and three sixteenths would give me three and 13 sixteenths inches. Find the value of x. So if AB is equal to 4x and BC equals x plus 5 and AC equals 35, now I'm still following along with AB plus BC equals AC because B is in between, I would be able to add them up, 4x plus x plus 5, set it equal to 35, use my good Algebra 1 skills, and solve my equation and find that x is equal to 6. Now, congruent segments on a figure are always marked by the same amount of tick marks. So when I see a one tick mark here and a one tick mark here, this would tell me that the segment AB is congruent to segment BC. So I would be able to say segment AB, notice I have the segment bar notation, is congruent to segment BC. Now before I did also mention that if segments are congruent, then their measures are equal. So I could actually also then say, AB is equal to BC. And when I say equal, we don't use the word segment and we don't use that bar notation. I see uh, sets of two tick marks. So I could say that segment AE is congruent to segment um, CD, which would then also let me say that AE is equal to CD. Here I want to find any congruent segments in this figure. They're all marked up with numbers instead of tick marks. I can clearly see that none of the segments are congruent to each other. And in this last one here, I'm dealing with one set of tick marks across. So segment IJ is congruent to segment LK. And then, oh, that's my two tick marks, excuse me. And then the other one with the one tick mark would be that IL is congruent to JK. So anything with the same amount of reflexive marks within that one diagram is congruent. You don't want to mix and match diagrams that are different problems. So uh, you know, you wouldn't want to match this ABCDE diagram with this IJKL diagram. Okay, good. So now, a few problems that I want you to take a look at would be E is between D and F. If DF is equal to 5 centimeters and EF is equal to 1.25 centimeters, find DE. So you can pause right now as we go through these problems and then go, or you can just simply follow along with me. This is what a diagram would look like. DF is worth five, EF is 1.25. So to find DE, you would have to subtract and it ends up becoming 3.75 centimeters. Our next problem, number two, find AC. Okay, if I wanted to find AC, I would simply need to add up 4.9 and 5.2 to get 10.1. This one says, B is between A and C. If AB equals 5X, 
BC equals X plus 8. AC equals 20. Find X. So here it does tell you B is between A and C. Okay, you can pause right now and draw a diagram and do the solving. And then press play when you're ready. Okay, this is what your diagram would look like. You have 5X, you have X plus 8. A to C is equal to 20. So 5X plus X plus 8 equals 20. And through your solving your equation, you should be able to get X equals 2. In this diagram, the only thing is really just about seeing what's congruent to each other. So I would be able to see that segment BE is congruent to segment CD, which means that BE is equal to CD. So I'd be able to say both statements. If BE is equal to CD, then segment BE is congruent to segment CD. Okay, so this would be a measurement statement and this would be my congruence statement. And then this is our last problem. L is between M and N. ML equals 5X, LN equals 3X, ML equals 15. So you would need to draw a diagram and then find X. Feel free to pause and then press play. So this is what your diagram would look like. Now, 5X is ML, LN is 3X, but it also does tell you that ML is 15. So that would mean that 5X is actually equal to that 15 and X is equal to three. So that problem was a little different. I hope this video was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.